Welcome fellow adventurers to Maidens and Vault Hunter. Grab your fedora and bullwhip because this is Scorpius Corner and today you're getting tips on how to be a treasure hunter. It's not as hard as you might think. Pirates hit treasure all the time. Sunken ships hold endless amounts of treasure under the sea. Treasures are all around you, you just have to look for them. Here's some crucial information you need to know. Get a boat, it helps. Dress properly. It's well known that you find treasure easier in a fedora. As it happens, you also fight crime easier. Learn Sanskrit. Get a gun. And finally, find a sheep to tell you the locations of the top 10 hidden treasures. Oh wait. In number 10 we have Forrest Fenn's riches. When Fenn was 9 he found an arrowhead near his home in Texas. He fell in love with ancient artifacts after that. After becoming a pilot in 1960, Finn often flew to Pompeii looking for hidden treasure. Ooh, pilot! In 1980, Finn was diagnosed with kidney cancer and told he only had a few years to live. So he hid his most beloved artifacts and gave everyone clues to find them, which he estimates to be worth around 1 to 3 million dollars. In the 1800s, General George lost his battle against the Indians. He needed someone to take injured men back from the battlefield and that would be Captain Grand Marsh. He had a bunch of treasure on the ship and he realized that the weight of all the men would make the ship sink. He had no other choice than to bury the $375,000 worth of gold bars on the shores of Little Bighorn. It might sound like totally nuts that a boat sunk in the desert obviously wasn't a desert back then but if it's true millions of dollars worth of pills are still at the bottom of the sea surprisingly in 1870 a newspaper published a story that a guy actually found the treasure but since that one story ran there was no more mention of the guy or the ship so many people believe it's still out there most of these raiders were known for their lightning fast raids of Union camps and their ability to elude the Union army and blend in with the local folk. They were like real life Assassin's Creed guys. Anyway, a long boring story happened and Mosby was scared that there would be a battle. So he instructed his men to bury the knapsack full of gold, silver and family heirlooms between two pine trees. Mosby marked the trees with his knife. Unfortunately, when he sent his seven most trusted men back to get it, they were all caught and hanged and must be never returned for his treasure. Legend has it that a guy named Bay, Bayel, Bayel and his men were mining in the Rocky Mountains and stumbled upon a large amount of money, 63 million to be exact. All they could do to ensure its safety was to hide it. So he wrote three ciphers, one the exact location of the treasure, two the names of all the men in the next of kin and three the contents of the treasure. He trusted an innkeeper named Robert Morris to keep the box with the three ciphers safe. He was supposed to wait 10 years before opening it. At that point, a key to the cipher would be mailed to him, but it never came. Robert and his friend was only able to decrypt one of the ciphers, the contents of the treasure. John Lafitte and his brother Pierre were excellent pirates. Hey, if you're gonna be a pirate, you might as well be an excellent one. They had stolen so much treasure that they actually had to resort to burying some of it. After Lafitte died, legends of his treasure started circulating Louisiana. It might still be there. Butch Cassidy was a great outlaw of the Wild West. So much so that he formed a group of outlaws called the Brady Bunch. No, I'm kidding, the Wild Bunch. Before the lawman was on his trail, yep, you guessed it, they buried $20,000 somewhere in the Irish Canyon. Dillinger was an outlaw with a lot of money. In 1934, he was hiding out with a few of his outlaw buddies. FBI agents found where they were hiding and surrounded the place. The FBI shot the first three men walking out the door, who happened to be civilians. Amid all the confusion, Dillinger ran out of the back entrance. He ran a few hundred meters and buried $200,000 in small bills inside a suitcase. He was shot two months later and never had a chance to go back for his money. In 1622, a Spanish ship was caught in a hurricane off the coast of Key West. Many ships perished in the hurricane. They were carrying enormous amounts of silver, gold and gems worth about $700 million today. Some of it has already been found in 1985 by a treasure hunter by the name of Mal Fisher, a former student of mine. He found about $500 million, but experts believe there's still lots to be found. The original captain's manifest states that there were 17 tons of gold bars, 27 kilos of emeralds, and 30 35 boxes of gold. 
In 1712, Spain assembled one of the richest fleets ever to be assembled at that time. It was a fleet of 11 ships filled to the brim with silver, gold and jewels, estimated to be worth about $2 billion today. Stupidly for them, luckily for us, they decided to leave just before hurricane season. But the Grim Reaper came early that year and all the ships sunk. Since then, seven of the ships have been recovered but only a small amount of treasure has been found. One of the ships is still out there and that one is believed to contain most of the treasure. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this class has inspired my treasure hunting students to get out there and go for it. As always, all the links to our social media stuff is in the description below. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you on the flip side. Happy hunting! Dilingo was an outlaw. Oh, outlaw. Oh, pilot! You oh, pilot! You oh, pilot! Would make the ship 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 shake.